Welcome back. Senator Ron Johnson is leading a Homeland Security Committee investigation into Joe Biden, his son Hunter, and the Ukrainian gas company Burisma. He's seeking testimony from former Biden officials. We are now talking to Senator Johnson again. So, Senator, Democrats are accusing you of being used by the Russians for propaganda to interfere with the 2020 election. I'm wondering if you or your staff received information from pro-Russia Ukrainians. Well, first of all, completely false charges, and Democrats know they're false. Uh, when, when reports surface whether or not we received some of these audio tapes, uh, we told our Democrat minority, no, we haven't received that, and that's the truth. And yet they still continue to push the story, again, just like they falsely uh, misstate my you know, net worth based on records. So the fact of the matter is you know, we, we are primarily involved in looking at corruption within the agencies. Other people talk about this being centered on on. Joe and Hunter, Hunter Biden. It's not. We're, we're taking a look at the corruption of the transition process, and we're taking a look at those conflicts of interest and how that might have affected, for example, policies coming out of the State Department. So the, the materials we're reviewing come from the State Department. They come from the National Archives. They come from a Democrat-led lobbying firm that a Ukrainian national worked for it gave him access to very high levels of the Obama administration. So the, the only Russian disinformation that I'm aware of that affected the 2016 campaign was bought and paid for by the DNC and cut us for the Clinton campaign. And it was our investigation that uncovered the classified footnotes of the IG report that proved that the Steele dossier contained Russian disinformation and the FBI knew about it. They knew about that as far back as October 2016. And yet they continued to use that Steele dossier to corrupt the FISA court and, and get the uh, FISA warrants. Again, Democrats know these things, and yet they push these false narratives. And unfortunately, the press runs with them and gives them credibility when they have no credibility whatsoever. So my question is, what are Democrats afraid of in my investigation? And why don't you hear them outraged by the Russian disinformation bought and paid for by the DNC and the Clinton campaign? They're, they're silent on that fact. Instead, they push their own disinformation campaign which are false charges against me. So, Senator, I just want to be clear. Are you saying that you do not get information from pro-Russia Ukrainians or disinformation? We, we have not. What we're accused of are getting those audio tapes. We did not get those audio tapes. But what about okay? other things? And, and, again, we are getting information from a variety of sources, but primarily— And how do you verify US, that you, information? You, you, well, before we ever use it, we verify it and—, and and make sure that it's accurate and true before we'd ever publish anything. I would ask Democrats, what have I published, what have I reported on that is not true, that is, not, that is any form of Russian disinformation? There's been nothing, because most of the documents, most of our investigation has to do with documents out of the State Department, Department of Justice, the FBI, Blue Star Strategies, the Democrat uh, lobbying firm. You know, we, we were trying to subpoena records Yes, from a Ukrainian national that worked for Blue Star Strategy, and we were only going to subpoena his records when he was employed by a U.S. lobbying firm. How could that be Russian disinformation? So again, these are false charges. They are reported on across the board by the press. They take on a life of their own, but they're false. They're, that's the disinformation campaign, and Democrats and the mainstream media are happy to engage in that level of disinformation and that those level of false accusations and charges. It's, it's really grotesque. I want to ask you about the Russian bounties. President Trump dismissed reports that Russia has been paying the Taliban bounties to kill Americans in Afghanistan. And he also said in a recent interview that he hasn't talked about that with President Vladimir Putin. Do you think he should be asking about that? Well, again, I'm not, last, I'm not sure the last time he spoke with Vladimir Putin. Well, but he said he's talked not, with him I, I, eight I, times I'm and not, he hasn't asked I'm not, about it. I'm not shocked by the reports, as I would not be shocked by the reports that Iran could be paying. Uh, listen, serving Afghanistan is dangerous. And, you know, th there's no doubt about the fact that uh, there was reports of that in intelligence briefings, but there were unverified reports. There, there was actually, uh, you know, possibly uh, dis disagreement because it was an analyst report as opposed to hard information. I can't talk about a whole lot of it because a lot of it's classified. Are you looking into so it? I'm, 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 pardon? Are you yes, looking into it? Yes, and I, and I was briefed on it. And th again, this is, a, this is something else that is being blown way out of proportion. Again, not Russian uh, potentially 
paying bounties to kill American servicemen. But the whole issue in terms of when President Trump was briefed on this or whether he wasn't briefed on it, uh, it makes sense to me that he wouldn't have been briefed on this because at the time back then it was unverified. And by the way, if it was such a big deal, the big eight, that means Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff, they were briefed at the exact same time. They had access to the same information. If this was you know, so obvious and something had to be acted on immediately, why weren't they raising the issue? But they didn't. But they just, you know, they pile on, on President Trump like he should have been all-knowing on this. Uh, again, he said he this and his intelligence services say he was never verbally briefed on it. Yeah, it, it might have been involved in, you know, included his very thick presidential briefing, but it wasn't highlighted to him. And, and I, I believe that, uh, you know, those individuals telling us that. Senator, how much time has your committee spent on Burisma versus coronavirus, would you say? Uh, we've got a couple staff members who've been investigating corruption in the Obama administration back to 2015. The vast majority of our time is on COVID. We've held now six hearings or roundtables on it. We had a business round. We had a business meeting where we marked up and passed five pieces of legislation having to deal with the national stockpile, the vulnerability of our supply chains. The vast majority of my uh, not only staff, but our committee time has been focused on COVID, as well as the vast majority of my time. Well, I appreciate you being on our show so I can get answers from you directly. Thank you, Senator. Have a good day. Stay healthy. You too. Coming up, Wisconsin's new mask mandate. Is another legal and political showdown coming?